We want to bring in Tennessee Congressman and registered nurse herself, Diane Black. Congressman Black, good to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Good morning, and it's great to be with Your you. Your reaction to what you're hearing this morning? Well, this has been an issue for the last couple of weeks, and we know that this is very important to all of our members. And so getting the language right where everyone feels very comfortable, we all want to be sure that pre-existing conditions are covered. It's just getting the language right so everyone is totally comfortable. Uh, well, we've put several measures in there with backup measures, but uh, still haven't gotten us to where the point that we have the vote. So the, so the language meaning uh, should the states carry some of the burden? Well, the states will carry the burden, and in the in the in the management, uh, excuse me, in the amendment that we had just last week, uh, it's very clear in there that the states will have that ability to be able to have the at-risk pools that will allow people with pre-existing conditions to be in those pools, and in those cases that that will actually be blind, where they won't even realize that they're in that pool. They'll be treated the same as everyone else. It's just the manner in which the insurance companies will handle that case. Uh, so there are lots of backup points in there, but again, it has not completely satisfied everyone to the point where they're ready to vote for it. And if there's new language to do that, then let's take a look at it and let's get this job done. But Congressman, it's Dagan McDowell. As you change that language to appease centrists like your colleague Fred Upton, who came out and said, as it stands, he will not vote for this bill, then you risk alienating the Freedom Caucus members who shot down the first health care bill and were wooed by these changes to give the states more power. So it's a lose lose for you guys. Well, I think we get to that at the end of the day, and sometimes it's just a couple of words in the language to give people assurance that um, what they feel is really necessary is going to be there for them. And I will say that making law is like making sausage. It doesn't look very good while you're doing it, but it tastes pretty good when it's done. Congressman, are you working with the Senate as well? I mean, is there, are, are there talks going back and forth, so if the House does something, we're not going to see a big holdup on, on the other side? I am not involved <clears throat> with that discussion with the Senate, but I know that our leaders are, and they're, they're ready in the Senate, I'm told, to take up our bill and pretty much um, keep it the way it is with some maybe little additions here or there, but there have been discussions back and forth between the House and the Senate. Congressman Black, this is Heather Higgins. Obviously, there have been discussions because of the whole question of reconciliation and the challenge of, of not including provisions that are going to be problematic to that threshold in the bird test. But do you think that perhaps there's a messaging issue and that if instead of calling it risk pools, uh, we called it instead the, pre, uh, the guaranteed pre-existing condition protection fund, explaining what it is that it actually does, that we might in fact make some headway in terms of having people understand that all Republicans want to make sure that nobody with a pre-existing condition is unable to get insurance that's affordable. I, you know, I, I think you bring up a really good point. Many times here on the Hill, we use words and phrases that are not familiar to uh, everyday households. And so if we can say things more in a lexicon that helps people to feel comfortable with what we're doing, I think we need to do much, much more of that. So you think that it's a communication issue then? I think that's part of our problem is that we don't communicate as well. We get here within the walls of Congress and we talk languages that are maybe uh, in the industry are known, but when the everyday person, and I try to do that when I uh, do my clips back to the district, is to, to make sure that I'm explaining it in everyday household terms because honestly, before I came to Congress, many of these terms were not familiar to me either. So explain the budget for us, um, Congressman, because the House yeah. expected to vote today on that trillion dollar spending bill to fund the government through September, but a future shutdown remains a possibility. President Trump tweeted this yesterday, either elect more Republican senators in 2018 or change the rules now to 51 percent. Our country needs a good shutdown in September to fix this mess. Uh, what is your take on this spending bill, given the fact that a lot of conservatives are upset right now, uh, given the, the, the fact that, you know, it looks like the Democrats rolled over the Republicans again. Budget Director Mick Mulvaney uh, joined me earlier. Here's what he said about this. What I think you saw yesterday in that tweet was the frustration that the president has that I share, that a lot of people share, over how broken the spending process is in Washington, D.C., what we call the appropriations process. We're supposed to pass 12 appropriations bills uh, a year. We don't do that. At best, we pass one altogether in these giant omnibus bills at the end of the year. 
They're massive. People don't get a chance to go through them. It's a lousy way to run a country. And I think that's what you saw yesterday. The president says in his mind, and he's right, we need to fix that. And if it takes a shutdown in September to drive that home, then we'll have that discussion in September. Are you disappointed with this bill? Uh, well, let me just say this first of all. I'm the budget chairman, so let me make this clear. This is not the budget. The budget is what we put out um, and vote on a top line dollar. Uh, what is going on now is called the appropriation process, where they take that top line dollar that we give to them, and the appropriators in those 12 different areas put those on a line. They do line items. And so this is not the budget, this is the appropriation process. And I know that's confusing, but I wanted to make that clear. And it is, as um, I think. Mick Mulvaney has talked about. It is not a perfect process. If we were doing it the way it should be done, we would be voting on these bills individually one by one throughout the year. We wouldn't wait and put them all together. This is not the way it was meant to be. And um, part of that is because it's very difficult to send something over to the Senate when they need 60 votes rather than just the 51. So you can't put all the conservative measures that you want in there because you're always constantly looking at what do you have to do to negotiate um, to make sure that you get the votes in the Senate. And it is broken. I wish that the Senate would fix their process so that we could do it with a simple majority and um, do it w w without having to worry about the filibuster. All right, Congressman, good to see you. Thanks very much for weighing in this morning. You're very welcome. We'll Thank see you for you having soon. me. Congressman Diane Black joining us.